Hey internet, today we're going to do another little species spotlight. Uh, this guy has a lot of names, so that's why I figured this one be a little bit interesting. This is the Thayer's King Snake, or the Variable King Snake, or the Nueva Leon King Snake, or Lampropeltis Mexicana Theri. So, a lot of names. There's a fun little weird thing that happens with, for whatever reason, specifically with North American colubrids, where the taxonomy just gets changed up a lot, and they're always constantly changing names. But for uh, most commonly in the hobby, they're mostly called either the Theri, Thayer's King Snakes, or the Luevo, Nuevo Leon King Snakes. So I'm just going to call them Thayer's King Snakes for the rest of this video, because that's just what I call them. Um, these guys are naturally found in Nuevo Leon, so in the Sierra Madre mountain range in Mexico. Um, pretty much every individual that we have in the hobby these days has all been captive bred. Um, what's really cool about these guys is they come in a wide variety of color phases. So it's not necessarily gene, they're just individual color phases that they do occur naturally, and a few more have kind of been established since we started breeding them so readily in captivity. Um, this is the milk snake phase, or the tricolor phase. So Lampropeltis is the, uh, the genus that, all, that almost all king snakes and milk snakes are in. Um, and then the Mexicana is the region of so the Mexican, uh, so Mexico and Southern Texas. So that also has the Mexican black king snakes, the gray banded king snake alternos and things like that. Um, but there's uh, well, probably the most common phase of this one is the Nueva Leon phase. And that's where it's kind of more like an orangey green color. And instead of these black triads, they're more kind of like or, like red, like red blotches down with a little bit of black around them. Um, there's also now a new one, which is kind of like selectively bred that's become its own line of the Nueva Leon, which is called Buckskin, where it's a little bit more tan instead of the creamy color. And then there's also a melanistic phase, which is all black. And melanistic means it's solid black. It's increased melanin, so the, the darker they are, they're born kind of like this triad-y color, but eventually they turn all black, kind of like a black milk snake. Um, these guys are wonderful, wonderful pets. Um, they really only get about three feet, maybe three and a half. Um, so they stay a really nice, manageable size. And as far as what we consider actual king snakes, these are probably some larger tricolored king snakes. The rest are all kind of like Arizona Mountains and Scarlets, which stay a little bit smaller. So I'm a big fan of the tricolor phase. These guys are probably my favorite um, king snake, maybe favorite colubrid in general, although I, I am starting to get way more into North American colubrids, to be completely honest with you. But I really like these guys just because it. I feel like they're really not in the hobby a whole lot. I think, um, you know, ball pythons have kind of taken over everything for the last few years and colubrids are really starting to come back. But for a long time, these guys were really hard to find. And so when I finally found someone that had a pair of tricolors, I jumped at it. And um, if anybody out there is watching, they can correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe the melanistic phases usually come from two tricolors. So I think they've finally been acclimated to our house long enough where this coming season, I'm going to brumate them. So that's when you put them down for hibernation. And when they come back up, you get food into them. And then they will start to breed. And hopefully I can produce some of these guys next season but that's just a quick little easy one the care for these things is kind of like every other north american colubrid you know a nice little warm spot but it doesn't need to be anything crazy like a ball python or something like that um, enough space for them to completely stretch out they do like to climb a little bit and always make sure you provide them with fresh water and a nice humid hide um, that's really about it i just really like these guys a whole lot and he is being quite uh quite good for me today he's not bitey he's just really flighty so he likes to move and squirm around if I ever make any fast movements, but he's been really good today, so I decided to bring him out for this episode today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and I, I think I want to do a few more of these kind of quick, easy ones, not necessarily just about individual species, but just some kind of shorter videos that are just a little bit more digestible for people, and that way you guys don't always have to sit there listen to my really long, ranty videos all the time. Um, once again, I hope you did enjoy this video today. Um, if you can, please like and subscribe as usual. It really is appreciated. Like I have said before, I'm not trying to get rich and famous. I just would like to propagate good information and get my stuff out there because I think it's pretty good and a lot of people could benefit from it. Um, uh, please check us out on Facebook and Instagram. You know, we do a lot of stuff on there as well. If you have any questions, comments, ideas, please let me know down in the comments for 
of this. And once again, hit me up on Facebook or Instagram. Those are easy to get a hold of me. JC's Rough House as always. Once again, hope you guys like this video and I'll check you next time.